Welcome to a new video in our series, A Beginner's Guide to the C Programming Language. The last video discussed arrays and how to declare, initialize, and process data in arrays. In this video, we will see how to create user defined data types. We will see how structures and unions are declared, initialized, and accessed. Please like and share this video, follow our channel, and subscribe for notifications on new videos. In your programs, you will need to abstract real life objects and declare their attributes within it. For example, you will need to store data about an employee in a payroll application. This data includes name, date of birth, age, basic salary, etc. This data can be stored in a single user defined data type called a structure. So, structures and unions are user defined data types because you can create them in your program and they are not defined within the C language. Both structures and unions are collections of many members and each of these members can be of different data types like ints, long, arrays, etc. Like arrays, they occupy a contiguous area of memory so that each member will be at a known offset from the starting address of the structure. The main difference between structures and unions is that while all members of a structure are allocated memory, the size of a union is the size of its largest member. That is, the members of a union all share the same area of memory. Therefore, only one member of the union can contain data at a particular instance. Whereas in a structure, all the members of the structure can contain data at the same time because each one of them has its own area of memory. To declare a structure, you need the keyword struct followed by a structure name. This structure name is the type name and is followed by a declaration of each structure member within curly braces. Members of a structure can be of any data type, including arrays, structures, and unions. As shown here, we have declared a structure called struct employee record. It has four members. The first three are character arrays that contain the name, date of birth, and date of joining. The fourth member is an int containing the employee ID. A structure is allocated contiguous memory. In this case, 72 bytes of memory will be allocated to the structure variable. Each of the members of the structure is allocated memory contiguously. This is how you declare a user defined type. Once a data type is defined, you can then declare variables with this data type. As shown here, the variable employee has data type struct employee record. It will be allocated 72 bytes of memory. You can also initialize a structure variable. In this case, the structure variable declaration is followed by an assignment operator and an initializer list in curly braces. The initializer list contains constant initializers for each member of the structure. The figure to the right shows how the structure is laid out in memory. As you can see, the structure variable name is the starting address of the structure, and each member is then allocated contiguous memory. The preferred way of declaring user defined data types is by using the typedef keyword. As shown here, we use the typedef to declare a new data type name for the structure data type. So the user defined type struct employee record is now given a new type name called employee. To declare the variable, you use the type name employee to specify the variable's data type. The variable initialization happens exactly as before. Now, once a variable is declared, you would need to reference the individual members of the structure. This is done using the dot operator. The dot operator is a binary operator. It takes two operands. The left-hand side operand is the structure variable name, and the right-hand side is the structure member name. The return value of a dot operator is the value of the member. Here we have declared two employee variables, employee one and employee two. Both of these occupy different areas of memory and contain separate employee data. We have initialized both these variables. The dot operator would return different data for each member as shown here. In the code example shown, 
The user defined data type called employee is defined. Two variables are created with the type employee and each member is initialized. The program then proceeds to print the value of each member of the two variables. As you can see, each argument of the printf function accesses every member of the structure variables employee and employee2 using the dot operator. Like any other data type like ints, floats, and chars, you can also have an array of structures. Creating an array of structures is similar to creating an array of ints. As shown here, we have created an array of five employees and initialized each array element. The outer curly braces are for the initialization of the array. The inner initializer lists initialize each structure within the array. Any element of the structure can be addressed using the base index form of addressing. If we use the expression employee in square brackets 2 dot employee ID, it will access the third element of the array. The emp ID for this element is initialized to 23934. Let us check this out in the debugger. As you can see, the array is declared and initialized. As we step through the initializers, you can see each array element initialized with appropriate values. The for loop iterates through this array of structures from 0 to 4, printing out the members of each element of the array. After the five array elements are displayed, the loop exits and the program terminates. This is the output of the program on the console. Now let's look at a union in C. As mentioned earlier, Structures and unions are syntactically very similar. The main difference between a union and a structure is that the size of a structure is the sum of the sizes of its individual members, while the size of a union is the size of its largest member. This means that each member of a union shares the same area of memory. Thus, only one member of the union can contain data at one time. The programmer should keep track of which member of the union holds the data. Unions help you reduce memory usage when you have mutually exclusive data so that instead of allocating memory for all the data items, you can allocate memory for the largest data member and store the data in this shared pool of memory. As shown here, the union declaration is very similar to that of a structure. The union data val has two members. The first member is a structure called byte data. And as you can see, the structure does not have a structure tag. This can be done if you are declaring variables in the structure type declaration itself. Also, since this is an anonymous structure, you will not be able to declare more variables or references to it later on in the program. So the two members of a union are structure byte data and the int value. As you know, both these members will share the same area of memory. Since both of them are 4 bytes wide, the memory allocated to this union is 4 bytes. The slide shows how the memory is shared between the two members. Let's look at an example. Here we have declared a typedef data, which is a union. In the function main, we declare a variable of type data. We then initialize the int union member. As you can see, we use the dot operator to access the member, just like in a structure. In an earlier video, we had discussed the little endian and big endian formats. We know that the machines we use are in the little endian format, which means low memory has low significant data and high memory has high significant data. So byte one to byte four of the structure byte data will display low byte to high byte values. We have initialized the value of the int union member to a hex value of 0, 01, 0, 02, 0, 03, 0, 04. So the display will show the hex value for byte 1 as 04, byte 2 as 03, byte 3 as 02, and byte 4 as 01. If the machine stored data in the big ended format, then the data values would be reversed. Note the usage of the dot operator in the printf statement. The leftmost dot operator uses the union variable name and the union member byte data. The result of this dot operator is a structure. 
The next dot operator accesses this structure and its members. Let us debug this program and see the result. The program is similar to the one we have just discussed. Let's single step through it. The watch window shows the variable value 1. We can expand the union to reveal its two members. The member byte data is also a structure, so we can expand that as well. At this point, the union is not initialized, so it contains junk values. Let's single step and initialize one member of the union. As you can see, when we initialize it with the hex value, the int member contains the value that it has been initialized, and the structure members are also initialized to contain the individual values of each byte of the 4 byte value. Let's continue single stepping to display the values of the members of the structure. As we have seen, both structures and unions are user defined data types which can be used to create a collection of variables of different types. We have demonstrated the difference between a structure and a union. This is the end of this video. Please follow our channel, like and share this video, and click on the bell icon to receive notifications. In the next video, we will discuss pointers. Pointers are a very important topic in the C language. They are used to access memory indirectly. See you then.